What's up traders, welcome back to Da Nang in Vietnam on this rooftop which I love to be at. I'm here like every day pretty much which is awesome. Today I want to share with you a trick on how you can use my Facebook as your trading journal. I've been using this for a couple of years now and for me that really helps with like the stats, counting things and especially now with algos, I think it's really good with Lewis. So I'll show you how to kind of use my Facebook and look at a few things to get a good trading journal on that. So let's get started with that right away. Alright, so to give you guys a better overview of this, I want to go to my Facebook to kind of show you the things that I'm going to talk about to make it very clear. So here we go. I'm going to use for this example two accounts and they have a different purpose. So one is a live account for the algo trading that I do. The other one is a demo account for the algo but more as a test account. So I test things in that account and that's kind of a different purpose but they both have different features that I want to show you how I use. And you can use the same thing after for yourself. Now, if you want to make a good journal in my Facebook, there are three things that I think you have to do and you have to go through. The first thing is about checking your performance. So you first have, of course, to connect your account to my Facebook, which is very simple to do. And then it's just about kind of reviewing that performance every 30 days. So there's no point logging into your my Facebook every day or every two days or every week. I don't think that's very useful. I used to do this before when I started my trading in my Facebook. It's to go back every week to kind of go back on the result and making sure that I didn't miss anything. Now, if you are experienced a little bit, you don't have to go back every week, go back every 30 days, even maybe every quarter if you want. That's just going to make it simple and you won't be too stressed about your results. So what I do is that there's a few things I look at every 30 days. The first thing is, of course, my percentage, but that's like kind of given. The other thing you want to look at is... And you can even sit by a month over here. The other thing you want to look at is basically your win rate. So is it the same thing as usual? You have a good win rate or not? My win rate here is about 46%, which is pretty much average what I get usually. Doesn't really change that much. And here's where you see the average win and average loss. So if you know that you always use the same thing per pip, probably then you can look at this over here. So I see I have pretty much double, even more than double, okay? But you would wanna look at your dollar amount over here, which is gonna be easier to get a better overview because the number of pip doesn't matter. You can risk a lot or less per pip, and that's gonna change how much you earn on a trade. So I will be looking over here, for example, in the experimental account I have. This account is a bit different, so it's kind of testing things. You will see the win rate is roughly the same, which is interesting. And here's what I want to compare. So the average win and average loss, we look, when you look at the dollar amount, they are not exactly two to one, but close to it. So that for me would be good. I would want to monitor this and maybe track this even in a notebook to kind of see how it progresses, how, how it changes over time. And that's where you can adapt more easily. As opposed to if you just look every month and you forget the past numbers, then you don't have really some base to kind of base yourself on. So that's something you want to track very closely because if it's changed too much, it's going to be tricky a little bit, okay? So that's something you want to look at. And of course, like the percentage you gain is important, but the win rate and the average win, average loss are more important for you because those are going to dictate pretty much how much you earn on the long term. Okay, so very important to think about. And then it's just a matter of doing this. Now, the other thing, second thing you got to use are the tags. And tags are big in my Facebook. Now, you will see these over here. Uh, those are tags I put automatically if it's a trade on a 60 minute chart and that's based on a comment here that the algo gives so when it says 60 it's on a 60 minute chart okay it's pretty simple now what you want to do is you want to use tags very wisely and I'll, I'll show you two things so first of all on this live account I use a bunch of different tags which are different than on the demo account so I'll go through both because it's important to look at here I classify two different things so the what is a complete engulfing candle, which it should be by default. Okay, unless there's a kind of tweak and a different rule. And then here's where I put what level they reach. Do they reach the three R's, three to one of what to risk is my second deck profit, or do they only reach the first one? So they're gonna have two trades. Here's a one R, so this is a one R trade. And here's a three R. Now this is gonna allow you to do something very useful, which is you can do your custom analysis and see 
if you were to only go to 3R, what return do you actually get? And you would go into here, the tags, and you will be able to kind of classify, let's say only the 3R, and see then, well, if you only do this, only 3R trade, what is your win rate, okay? And you will see here for me, it will be lower, I think. I will only get a 27% win rate, which wouldn't really work, okay? So that's why I decided to take 1R and 3R. Now, what if you say, well, what if you look at only the 1R? So you would uncheck the 1R and uncheck the 3R, and then you will calculate, well, it looks like we would get a higher win rate, but of course we would get a lower here uh, reward to risk. Okay, so that's something you have to think about. And then you can look at what's the best return. So for me, it seems so far that the combination of both is the best. That's why I use it. But you got to do the test for yourself and see what's the best. Okay, I'll just go over here because there are other tags I use. So investigate is when I see an error in the script or like a trade that shouldn't be taken. Uh, beyond the middle band, this shouldn't happen too often. But these are the trade beyond the middle band of the bonger band. Now, if we look at these, we can see if they're profitable or not. Okay, so so far it seems like they're not. Well, they're pretty much break even. Okay, but in the future I want to test this out to see if with the algo, is it better to take trades beyond the middle point or just skip them? Okay, I want to test this out. Uh, other tags we have over here are so not beyond not beyond the middle band. Okay, we want to test things out. Uh, if it's the first pullback, something I tested recently. So is it like in a trend on a first pullback or first retracement? Are these trades better? And we want to test over here. So, so far, I don't think we had many of those, but I'll just look, show you guys, see if that makes sense. But these seem to be profitable so far. Okay, they seem to even be really profitable. So, that's a pretty good thing. Uh, is it non-complete engulfing candle? Which, in that case, not something I will trade, but it could happen with takedowns. These are not profitable so far. So, we can cut them in the future in the script. Make uh, rules that we don't take these trades anymore. Okay, very useful. Now, in my demo account, when I was like testing things out, and I still test them, there's still trade open right now over here. So, when I test things out, uh, I want to make sure that I know what's profitable when and what's not. So, the results here have been very impressive so far in the past few months. But these are a lot higher than the, than the live account because there's more risk, okay? And that's, that's given. But some tags I was using, and I kind of stopped using most of them because I don't really track this too much. But we'll just go back very far and I'll show you the tags I was using. Okay, so right over here, we have pretty much the same tags. Bunk Joe Ben and Golfing, be on a mill ban, um, non completing golfing. We had the 60 minute chart, so the these we have here engulfing of the same color. So I cannot say that's engulfing, but engulfing and candlestick are the same colors, so like a bullish engulfing, engulfing a bullish candle, which I wouldn't trade otherwise in most cases. But I'm just testing it and see which what works well or what doesn't, okay? And then you can go to your analysis, and this is why I use kind of the script for my live trading is I took what was profitable and just use that now, okay? And that's pretty much how you do it. So, for example, we can look here, we can see, well, non completing golfing candle. Test this out, and it should be pretty a bad strategy because you want to not take those trades. Then you look at your complete bullish engulfing, so if they are complete, the results are going to be really good, okay? So results are, and these are not all, all the trade, they're only part of them, okay? only for the first month. That's where the result will differ. Uh, what if you look at, uh, I'm not sure if I have angle things in color. I think these were not profitable, let's see. Well, a little bit profitable, that, that's good, so we can take them still. Okay, so those are things that I use and they're very useful. Now the third thing that I want to talk about for my fixed book, is the fact that this is not gonna work for everything. So you wanna take into account two different things. Number one, the trades you miss because you couldn't be there and take the trade. So if you have an algo, that's less gonna be a problem. But there might be trades that you miss for some reason, like the algo missed them or you place his own wrong and the algo misses the trade. That happens. Now, this is not gonna be shown here and that's, that's normal, but you wanna keep track of this somewhere else to see how your performance will be affected if you took all the trades that you should take, okay? And the other thing are if you trade manually, the trades you decide not to take. Like, where are they? Like, here you wouldn't see them, but you want to take this into account. Very important. So, those are things that will make you pretty much a good journal with my fixed book. Hope that was useful, guys. As always, comment below with your thoughts. Here are a few comments from the past video. I appreciate you guys always for leaving your comments. And subscribe if it's not done yet. 
I'll catch you back here or somewhere else for another video tomorrow. Ciao.